Welcome to our video tutorial. Today's topic is multi-threading. Because the topic is relatively broad, we decided to break the tutorial into three parts. In part one, we'll cover the basic concepts for designing multi-threaded applications. In part two, I'll show you the coding required for our sample application. And in part three, we'll step through the code at runtime. So let's get started. Let's look at the picture that I will use to explain the process involved in running a multi-threaded application. Both bars in the picture represent memory blocks that are being used by threads. In our example, I will be using a class object that will execute entirely on the child thread. So let's take a look at what happens when the main process is creating a child thread. Inside our program we have a procedure that initiates a new object based on our class and creates an instant of that object in the memory allocated to the child thread. That process is represented by a yellow arrow in our picture. And finally, starts the execution of the child thread by calling a method that have been designated as the thread entry point. In our picture, that call is represented by a green arrow. Later, we'll look at the code necessary to perform those steps, but for now we do not need to look at the details of the process. For the multi-threading to work, we do not need to perform any other operations. We could stop at this point and hope that our child thread completes all its intended operations. In this scenario, we wouldn't know if there were any problems, what were the results, and finally, when the process finished. To add a mechanism that would enable us to monitor our child thread, we could use a callback methods that provide communication between threads. .NET provides for us objects that are capable to carry those tasks and are called delegates. A delegate is a pointer to a structured block of memory it is occupied by a method and its variables, arguments and return values. And a declaration for a delegate object would look like this. The first delegate is a sub with two variables and no return value. The second one is a function with two variables and a return value. Of integer. I would like to show you another picture that will illustrate the concept behind the delegate object. This picture visualizes the relation between the delegate object as a pointer and the space it points to. So in our example, a delegate is a pointer to a memory block that contains an integer value a generic list of strings and some processing code. In case of our function, it points to a memory block with one variable of a custom object class and one variable of integer and it also contains return value of type integer and the execution code. Both of our example delegates provide us with a way to communicate between threads. The difference is that in case of function delegate, the communication is two-way. In case of the sub delegate, the communication goes only one way. Now if we look at our picture, during the process, we'll be using a function delegate that provides two-way communication. And when the process finish, it will send a signal to the main thread that's completed and we're going to use a sub delegate to do that. This concludes the coverage of the basics of multi-threading and we are ready for review of the coding that is required for multi-threading implementation. And that will be a topic of the part two of this tutorial. But before we look at the code, I would like to show you a running application that uses multi-threading. As a demo, I created a low application that uses multi-threading. 
to change the background color of that button. Here we're going to start the child thread. You're going to see that it's flickering because it's changing the color so rapidly. Now I'm going to slow down the child thread. So now the changes are very gradual. And now I'm going to signal that thread to stop. And now no longer the color changes. And this is how the multi-threading is communicating and performing. At this point the child thread completed and finished. And I could start it again, slow it down again, and stop it again. This concludes our part one and hopefully I'll see you in part two and part three to finish our multi-threading project. I'll see you soon.